Hi there. Okay, uh, my exasperated smile is because I'm having to record these all over again. If you managed to see, I put up videos previously with absolutely zero sound attached, which was handy. And that's fun having to do this all over again. Anyway, this is section four of ecosystems. Uh, so it's the, the last video in this particular key area. It's going to be on predator and prey. You should know the definitions of these words by now from things like primary school even. Um, but the main thing we're focusing on is predator prey graphs and explaining them. So we have to know about the interaction between predators and their prey and reasons why prey numbers are important and reason why predator numbers are important. So you have to be able to define predator and prey, describe the act of predation, say what it is, draw a predator prey graph, and explain a predator prey graph. Yes, we will be focusing on that. Okay, uh, predation is the act of one animal hunting and killing another animal for food, okay? We do not call herbivores predators. They do not hunt the grass. Squirrels are not predators, okay? They do not go around hunting the nuts. I know they search for them, but it's not a hunting-killing relationship there, okay? So predation is only for animals hunting, killing other animals for food. Okay, a predator is the animal that eats the other animal. Prey is the thing that's going to get eaten. Some species are both predator and prey. So, for example, small birds can be predators because they predate on insects, which are other animals, but they can also be prey to bigger birds. Okay, so some animals can be both predator and prey. You might need to identify that from a food chain. So you need to recognize, well, it's got a predator, but it also predates on something. So it's both. Primary consumer, as I mentioned before, eating a plant is never considered a predator-prey relationship. Okay, so when we're talking predator and prey, we're only dealing with animals. We're not dealing with plants. OK, this is an example of a predator prey graph, something to notice about it. When prey numbers go up, predator numbers go up, but not as much as prey. OK, when prey numbers go down, predator numbers come down. But there is a slight time lag. OK, so prey goes up and it's a wee while after the predator numbers start to go up. Basically, they need time to adjust to the more food being around. When prey numbers go down again, predator numbers go down because they need time to starve to death, which is nice.
Okay, so what we can do is we can chat through the various points of this graph and you might get asked to explain any one point on this particular graph. Now, if it's on the increasing line of prey, what you would say is population of prey is increasing because um, of maybe lack of predation. Okay, so there's a lack of predators. Then predators start to increase because there is more food available for the predators. So the reason why the predators then increase is because there's more food available for them. Okay. As predator numbers start to increase, prey numbers start to drop. Prey numbers drop because the predators are starting to eat them and bring their numbers down. As prey numbers continue to drop, predator numbers will drop because there is a lack of food. They have essentially eaten all of the food in that area. They've preyed on all of the deer in that area. So predator numbers will drop slightly after that as some animals start to starve to death. Once predator numbers get low enough, prey numbers start increasing again due to the lack of predation and the cycle essentially starts all over again, okay? So what we're describing in terms of why prey numbers go up, prey numbers go up because of lack of predation, predator numbers go up because there is lots of prey to eat, prey numbers go down because of lots of predation, predator numbers go down because of lack of food to eat. Okay, those are the reasons why graphs might increase or decrease at those points. Okay. So to summarize, okay, aside from the points in the graph that you need to know, predator is an organism that hunts and kills another animal for food slash energy. Prey is an animal that's hunted and killed by another animal for food slash energy. And that is it for the ecosystem's key area. The next one is distribution of organisms. It's, it's rather large, unfortunately. I think I've split it into six videos to try and minimize the amount of stuff being bombarded at you at any one time. But it is a quite big, there's quite a lot of knowledge in the distribution of organisms one. So be aware for that. Make sure that you've got your definitions for this particular unit fairly solid before you move into distribution of organisms. And I will see you then.